Good morning, everyone. It's Brenda Quintana here. My blog is QBsQuest.com. I'm so glad you're here with me this morning. I have a super cute Easter basket to share with you today. And I, if you follow me, you'll know last week I did a really easy Hershey's bunny holder. Today's Easter basket is an easy woven basket, but it is harder than last week's project. For a woven basket, it is easy because if you've ever woven a basket before, all those little pieces coming up and you have to weave everything in and out, it can get a little tricky and time consuming. So I did kind of an updated version, a modern version of the basket with broader bands and it's a little easier to come together, but it still is a woven basket. So I know you're gonna appreciate it. Um, I've been doing Easter baskets for a long time. Um, usually I do one every single um, year for Easter. Sometimes I do more than one. Um, but this year I think it's kind of a cute little um, update to the basket. Here it is. And it's kind of hard to share because when, when I tip things, um, it kind of, things might fall over a little bit. Um, it's there it is. I, I don't, uh, I guess I'll have to show you how to do it. Um, this cute little daffodil, I'm going to show you how I made that too, because that's the perfect pop of yellow to contrast with the purple. And I've got all sorts of candy in here. So I'll show all of that um, afterwards uh, while I'm completing the project. Now, if you follow me, you are probably already on my email list, but if you're not on my email list yet, um, you might want to get on it so you can get my project sheet. I send out one project sheet per week on Saturdays and it's for my Friday fun project. Um, and it gives you all the measurements for the project of the day. Um, so you'll want to get on that. And the way you get on that is go down in the description of this video and there will be a link to subscribe subscribe and then you'll have access to my um, project sheets and you'll get the new ones um, going forward. So that's a nice little perk for all of you. All right, I it's going to take me a little while to get through all the pieces of this project. So why don't we just get started? I will talk to you afterwards. So if you have any questions, um, please um, post them in the comments while this is live or if you're watching this as a replay afterwards you are I'd love for you to comment down below it really um, kind of warms my heart afterwards to hear um, that you made my project what you used it for it it's just um, I love the designing process so sometimes I'm not the one that can make all of these projects for different people. But I know so many of you do. And I think that's so awesome because I don't have the time. I Otherwise, I wouldn't have time to design. But I love it when you guys make my projects out in the world and, and share them with everyone. So please let me know if you do that. Um, that makes me so happy. Um, so anyway, let's get started. And I'm gonna pop over here. I'm going to prop up my project sheet. Oh, before I forget, because I always forget things. Um, I haven't put this on my um, supply list yet. My supply list will be down below in the video description. Also, it's available on my blog. I'll update my supply list afterwards. After this morning while I was doing the project, I thought this would be awesome. These are the printed gusseted cellophane bags. If you wanna give these baskets out and you're kind of handing them out, you can put them inside one of these. If I remember afterwards, I'm gonna show you how um, I how it looks, but just in case I forget, um, that's kind of a nice way to store it. You just put it in here, it fits, I tried it out, and you can tie the top with a little a bit of ribbon. Um, so that's another way um, to hand them out. Of course, these would make really nice table decorations on your Easter table. Just imagine a whole bunch of these little uh, baskets out there. I love the little greeting Easter blessings. It's so, so cute. Okay, let's get started. Okay, 
The base of the project is made, it's a hexagon, so it's made with these dies called the Beautiful Shapes dies. We're going to use two of these hexagons, and I'm using this label, this skinny little label here. I don't know if you can see on this Easter Blessings. It's got um, embossing on it a little bit, and that comes from this die right here. It both cuts and embosses. Then I'm also using the Daffodil Daydreams bundle to create this cute little daffodil back here. Plus, um, I use the Easter Blessings greeting out of here. And I'm using this lattice work um, stamp, and that's gonna go on the handle. You can see the little detail right there. Um, so that just adds a little accent, makes it look more like a handle. So I do use all of these um, things in my in my project. Okay, so this month the mini stamping cut and emboss machine is on sale for 20% off and I want to grab these hexagons and let's give this machine a whirl. I love it because it's small. Some people call it the mini boss. So look how tiny it is compared to my other machine. Let's open it up and one little trick that someone taught me right before this machine went on sale was don't use the number one platform for die cutting. Um, use number three. It's a little thinner and um, it works just a little bit better. So you'll need number three and um, these little number two plates. Put them the right way so the twos are the right way. Here, I always put the flatter one on the bottom. And I'm going to take some Highland Heather paper and I'm going to cut two hexagons. These ones are um, the largest one and the next largest. So the largest and the second largest. And I'm just going to run these through. Machine. Look at how cute that is. Look how easy that is. The mini boss. The mini bus. Okay, so we've got our two little hexagons. And I'll show you what we need the second hexagon for in a moment. Put mini boss out of the way for a second. All right. Okay, then we're going to take our trimmer. And this time we're going to use a piece of fresh freesia cardstock. We're going to be using three purples in this project. They are fresh freesia, highland heather, and gorgeous grape. This color is fresh freesia. This piece measures seven and a half inches by two and a quarter inches. We're going to pop this in our trimmer and we're going to score first. Um, I'm going to line this up. You can line it up on either side. I'm going to line it up on this side at the 3 8 inch mark. Make sure that's all the way in. And we'll take our scoring tool and score at 3 8 You can kind of see that. All right, and then we're going to take this piece on the long side and we're going to cut it into one and a quarter inch strips. So um, line up at the one and a quarter inch mark. and cut. You're going to need six of these. It's easier to score first and then cut because you could take all of these pieces, cut them, and then score them all at three-eighths of an inch, but that would take a little extra time. So why not score first and then cut? So I'll tell you in a second what they all should measure. Okay, so we've got six of these pieces. One, two, three, four, five, six. They measure one and a quarter by two and a quarter. And then one end has that little score mark in three eighths of an inch, okay? So we'll take the bigger of the two hexagons and we're going to take our glue and 
We can fold these little pieces. I'm going to fold them as I go along. You can fold them all at once if you want. I'm going to fold this over, put some Tombow on here. And I'm going to put the fold right up against the edge. You want to go right to the edge and not over. Let me show you what that looks like. I find it easier to do it when it's folded over like this, but you might find your own way. So you're putting that little tab end and you're gluing it on there and it's like right on the very edge, okay? So I like to do opposites first because I find it easier than going to the next one over. So I'll go to the next one. Skip one and then go to the next one. They will all have this on. Each side will have one of these on it though. So um, if you want to go around in order, you can. I just found it easier for lining up if I skipped one and did op like skip one and then do the next one. Okay, and then we'll do this one, fold it, put glue on that little tab end. All right, and then we're gonna line that up. Okay, so now we're gonna fill in the other sides. Normally, when you do a woven basket, these would be like really long, skinny pieces. So you could do the weaving. We're doing short, stubby pieces. So now it's kind of easier to see how to center each of these. Okay. There is a little bit of an overlap here. Um, if that bothers you, you could angle cut, like angle cut these tabs down here at the bottom. Um, but I'm going to show you in a second what I did instead of doing that. Okay, so let's go ahead. In any case, it forms like a very uniform pattern. So, okay. And one more. All right, and I've got my Tombow right here and I just absolutely love my Tombow. Okay. All right, so We've got our piece all set up. And now what you can do is you can glue this secondary piece on top and that covers all of the little, little kind of overlaps and stuff. Now this doesn't look bad. If you wanna skip this step, you can, but this will give it a little finished piece. Also, if you're wanting to bring in some designer series paper into this, you could put a nice little piece of designer series paper down here at the bottom to line the bottom with if you wanted to. I'm not using designer series paper today, so I just opted to use a piece of cardstock. So look, that looks all nice and finished and that will be the inside of the basket. Okay, so now we're gonna need some strips. We're gonna do the weaving process now. And I'm going to show you what you need. You need five strips of cardstock, two in Gorgeous Grape, three in Highland Heather. They're all the same width and length. They measure three eighths of an inch by eight and a half. And that eight and a half length is a little bit longer than what you need to get all the way around, but it gives you a little bit of extra cardstock to hold on to as you're working. So I like to have it long like that, and then you just trim off the excess. Okay, so this is the bottom, and remember this is the, um, the, um, both of them are the bottom. This one's the inside bottom and this is the outside bottom. So um, you want to have the outside facing out and you're going to start, actually, before we do that, I'm going to pull out my bone folder and I just have to give a little shout out to my friend, Michelle Carter. She made me this cute little stampy, um, uh, they're called, 
what are they called? I'm going to pull this out. Oh, I didn't actually, oh, there it is. Here, let me show you. It's called a Stampy Box. Um, Stampy and her website, stampyboxes.com. And she made me this little holder. And you know how I'm always reaching over to grab stuff? Um, all my most important things. And uh, now I'm gonna have them all right at my fingertips. I'm never gonna lose my bone folder again because there's a little slot for it that goes right there. So I just thought that is just super, super cute. I love it. It's gonna sit right up at the top of my desk right here. You can probably see. And she personalized it for me. Brenda's stamping tools with a little bee for my team name is the Bee Stampers. So it's so cute. Okay. I digress. Um, let me continue on. Um, so I'm gonna take my bone folder and I'm going to curl all of these um, pieces that I just cut, three eighths by eight and a half, and just give them a little curl. This is gonna help bring them together. So it kind of, um, it curls around rather than, um, you know, crinkles in on itself. Okay, so we're gonna start off, this is the hardest one, I think, this bottom piece, um, because we're gonna bring it around on all sides and we're gonna bring these pieces up. So this is, this is the hardest piece, so just work a little bit more with this one and make sure you get it right. So we'll start off by putting Tombow um, on this first piece right here down at the bottom. We're gonna create that base. And what I like to do is line it up right there with the side and right against my base. All right, and then I'm going to come to the next one. And we're gonna line up that piece. I'm gonna bring this around you want you can kind of since it's a hexagon you can gently kind of bend right when you come to that point and give it a little bend so it kind of sits a little nicer you, you want to bring it so there's not too terribly much of a gap there um, as you come along and I'm gonna do my next bit of Tombow Just kind of cinch this up. Kind of mold it around there. Okay, just I'm burnishing it with my fingertips a little bit. Okay, to the next one. Little Tombow here. Bringing it around. Um, I only glue the top and the bottom strip all the way around. When it comes to the actual weaving of the middle strips, I'm not gluing every single one. Um, this one needs to kind of be glued in place because it's going to help bring that whole box bottom together. And you'll be so much happier to be able to do that. Okay, we're gonna come along one more time. We're almost back at the start. Just gonna bend that over first. And then we'll come in here and put some Tombow right along here. And bring this along. The nice thing about live videos is you can see it actually come together. Um, sometimes it takes a little longer than I want it to. So this one, if you wanted to, you could bring it into the inside and over, like overlap on the inside, but I'm just gonna cut this right off, right at the edge. And I know that gives it a little bit of a gap right here, but we're gonna um, come around and we're weaving everything in um, on the next few steps, so it's that's not going to be a big deal. So now you can kind of come along and just 
squeeze down on that Tombow a little bit. Just make sure it's all flush. Looks, it's pretty much all the way around the bottom. Okay, so now we get to weave. So I'm gonna, this gappy end, I'm gonna start there. And I'm gonna take this first piece and I'm going to just put Tombow about an inch along the bottom. And I'm gonna start this piece on the inside of my box. And I'll bring it in. And I want it to be just above this piece. And you want it, I'll show you in just a second what it looks like on the inside. So you're gonna start the first weave on the outside here. On the inside, oops, you can kinda of see, it's about 3 eighths of an inches up. It is parallel with the bottom and it it doesn't extend over here but it lines up right with this one okay let's see can I show you so you can kind of see where it starts okay all right so then that that's the first one I'm going to kind of bend this when it comes to right here just give it a little bend around the cardstock it makes it a little easier then you're going to come to the outside and then kind of pull this, push and pull this kind of tight. And then you can kind of give it a little bend right there again when it comes around the corner. That kind of helps make it lay a little flat. And then when you come to here, just bend it back a little bit. Bring it around, over. You wanna make sure it it is staying flush with this one down here at the bottom. Bend this back a little bit. Come around. And then you're back at the beginning. So for this little beginning piece, I'm just gonna bend this back. It's hard to get the light. You can kind of see my little piece is sticking out right there. There's a little bit, it's probably about half an inch or less. And I'm just gonna put a little Tombow on there. And I'm gonna adhere it back to the start of the box. Or the start of that strip. So right now it's got, it's alternating all the way around. And then we're going to start the next one. And so we're gonna do the same thing. Tombow on this end. This just helps anchor it in place. And I'm going to come on the side that has a stripe on it. And I'm gonna go just above there and bring it in. line it up once I've got that first piece anchored okay so now we're just going to come around bend that back around and then come back in to the inside. I'm just kind of giving it a little bend at the hexagon sides. It just kind of helps it stay a little flat. I'm just gonna check all the way around to make sure it looks good. And then we're back at the start where we started. I'm gonna bend back that little extra piece of cardstock Oh, sorry, I'm out of camera. Right there. That's the little cardstock piece. I'm going to bend that back and put a little bit of Tombow on it. And then I'll just connect it up with my the beginning of my strip and overlap it a little bit. Okay. Okay. 
All right, do you like those modern stripes? Okay, we've got two more strips to go. Little Tombow here. We're gonna go above this stripe we just finished and bring it in, line it up. As you get closer to the top, it actually gets a little easier because you don't have as much cardstock to deal with. And you can kind of see better into the inside of the box. Bend that back, around, over, around, over, around, around and then back to the start and then we're just going to bend this over and put some Tombow on there and glue it back to the start okay so you can see my little woven pieces and I like that it's got you know that kind of that texture of the weaving it's bowing out a little bit because you want it to have that look all right so now for the last piece we're going to put this purple piece all around and I like to make these boxes or baskets with three colors because that way you've got the contrasting on the inside and then you've got a separate color on the outside so for this one, you know what I'm going to do to make it easier? I'm going to go around and hit all of these tops like this right from the start. And then we can come around and so this one, I'm going to make sure I line it up with that top rim piece and then just kind of come around mold it make sure it looks nice make sure it's up at the top because this is this is your top piece you want it to look good and finished so just kind of mold it with your fingers I debated whether or not to score these pieces um, but the sides are just a little bit on an odd measurement so it's actually just easier to kind of you know give them a curl with the bone folder and then come around like that to the last side and then for this one if you want to we can pop this over to the inside and bring it together and we can glue this little piece. I'm going to bend it over. So you see I've got, oh, it's hard sometimes with the light. You can see that little end piece. I've tucked it to the inside and I'm going to put a little Tombow on here. Now one thing I didn't write in my instructions but I did with my basket so I'm going to actually go and do that real quick. Um, I don't know if you can see it on this basket, but I lined the edge rim with um, a strip of the Gorgeous Grape. Because you can see right now, oh, let me just come around here. You want to come around and make sure it's kind of sticking nicely all the way around. That top little layer should be flush. So if you look in the inside of the basket, I mean, it doesn't look bad or anything like that, but if you want to finish off the top a little bit, because that top rim, you will be able to see a little bit. I'm going to grab another strip of gorgeous gray. All right, here we go. That's why I like to do my project sheets afterwards because I tweak things as I go along when I make them. So I'm gonna curl another strip of Gorgeous Grape. It's the exact same size as before, three eighths by eight and a half. And um, we're going to this time, we're going to come around and we're going to, um, we're going to just bring it on the inside of the piece. I think 
I'm trying to decide what would be easiest. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and put Tombow on the basket on the inside. Just a little layer. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing. Just right up at the top, right where that strip is going to be sitting. I am going to put that Tombow right along there make it easy for myself. Okay, so there's my tab end. So I'm gonna start one over right here. And I'm gonna push this to the inside, molding it to the inside of the basket. Come one with the basket. Okay. I'm just lining, trying to push it up right to the edge. It's going to help your basket look finished because you know what after Easter's over this is a cute basket you could continue to to use it you know it's made out of paper but it could hold some little things okay all right I'm going to come through here and that extra rim is going to make the basket a little stronger okay I've just got that little tab end right there and I'm going to bring it over overlap it okay so what do you think do you like that little inside finished piece I think that helps um, make it look really pretty okay so there it is it's so cute I made another um, one this was the first one I made um, with white and um, fresh freesia the only thing if you use white white really draws the eye in so later on when you put like the daffodil in and the little greeting in um, this might actually steal <laughs> some of the thunder so you can make it with whatever colors you want um, so this is a different color combination, um, but this is the one that I, I chose um, at the end. Okay, so we're going to make a little handle for the basket. And this handle measures 11 inches by half an inch. So it's a little wider than our other strips. And we're going to take this gorgeous grape ink. And this is that lattice stamp that I was talking about from the Daffodil Daydream bundle. I'm just going to ink this up in Gorgeous Grape. And I'm going to go, I'm going to look for about the halfway mark. It doesn't have to be perfect because about two inches of this is going to be inside the basket. So I'm just going to stamp this on here. Isn't that pretty? And I think I trimmed down, yeah, I did trim down the stamp. So it was really easy for me to see where the edge is. I like to trim down my rubber stamps. Okay, so look at that. Isn't that pretty? Okay, so I'm going to put this away for a second. And then I'll take my bone folder and I'm going to give it a curl. Most of the curl needs to be right in the middle because that's where the, the handle is going to be. This um, handle is going to sit all the way down into the basket. So if you want to look at your basket and see, okay, I like this side better for the front. Okay, I like that one. So choose your side that you want for your front. And this is going to go all the way down into the basket. So it's a hexagon. So it's going to be on opposite sides of the hexagon. So I'm going to add Tombow to these sides. So how do I decide to do that? I'm going to see this is all the way in. I'm going to put my finger right on the edge of the basket. Lift this off. And now I know I can only put Tombow up to my thumb. So I'm just going to do that. And then I'm going to bring this all the way down and make sure it sits all the way down into my basket. If you want to, you could reinforce the side with a little brad. You need to poke a hole all the way through and put a brad through. Um, but I felt with this design, um, I liked, since we already had a lot of stuff going on, I thought this would look just fine as it was. So stick this back down into your basket. Put your thumb 
where the edge of the basket is, lift out. Now I know where to put my Tombow. Put this back inside. The handle is like really quite easy. Okay, so there is the basket. And now let me show you how I created the daffodil and the little um, doodads in the basket. All right, so we're gonna go to the daffodil daydreams bundle. It's got a lot of pieces, but these are the pieces I'm going to use. I'm using Daffodil Delight cardstock, crushed curry, and mossy meadow. And we're gonna bring our plates that we need. And we need to bring our mini boss in. Come here, the mini boss. So the number three plate, don't forget, number three plate is the best one. Okay, and we'll do our Daffodil Delight pieces first. Nice thing is we've got two of some of the dies, so it helps with the process of um, cranking them through. So we're using all of the base pieces, the big outline pieces with these dies right here. And then we're gonna come in with the detail in the darker color. So let's run these through. All right, the mini boss. I love that it's 20% off. Okay, I know where my poker tool is because it's in my stampy box. <laughs> so now I don't have to go find it. Oh, Michelle, you're making my life easier. Okay, so then I'm gonna come in scoot this to the other side. I like to crank through. You can crank through in both directions. I like to crank through in a specific direction because it makes me happy. So now we've got these detail pieces and we've got the detail pieces for the trumpet of the flower. I'll show you in a second what all the pieces were because I think I went through that quickly. It's going to come through. Okay. If you find your um, dies are sticking to your cardstock, I recommend just rubbing them over a wax paper, not the cardstock, just rub the die over a sheet of wax paper real quick. Um, I have a crumpet up, up ball in my, um, uh, right next to my machine that I'm always rubbing things against. So, okay, so in just a second, I'll show you all the pieces that I cut and the dies that match with it so you know you know what I'm doing. All right, and now we need some stems and leaves. And I'm just gonna put these long pieces of mossy meadow on here. Got long. Let's see, add this one. And then we've got the stem, so two leaves and a stem. Put this through. Okay. All right, look at all my cute little pieces. Let's pop this one out. All right, I wanted to show you how this all went through the mini boss while I was cutting it. It's nice to have the mini boss on my desk too when I'm die cutting because it's a lot smaller than my big one. Now, not everything will go through that. These dies all can go through there, so um, it works out well. So what are the pieces of the daffodil? All right, so we need that one and that one. And then we have this trumpet shape piece and this one right here. And then we've got the three um, uh, 
stem and then the two leaves. And we had duplicates of these ones so I could run them both through at the same time. So you can kind of just see which pieces I used to create um, the flower. And now we're gonna put the flower together. All right, so we're gonna take our glue. There is, I, I went through and I kind of decided, is there a best way to have this align? It's pretty good in any direction. There's one way that it works kind of out to be the best, but just play with it and decide it this middle one will glue in any direction and it will be almost perfect there'll be a little bit of an alignment a little bit off but it's not going to make a, a big deal if you don't get the exact correct alignment it's more just about getting it on because this is just the detail of the daffodil and put those together and then the bell together okay so now we're going to glue these two together so just put a little doll up in there and they come together and then for this one okay, I've got my dimensionals are right here now too, and I just love that I don't have to go find things anymore because they're right at my fingertips. I don't know why I didn't get any organization for such a long time, but now that I have good organization, it helps a lot. Okay, so I'm gonna just stick my bell right in the center of my daffodil. And then for this back piece, I'm just going to put Tombow on like that. And I'm going to bring this down in between two of the leaves. And what we're going to do, this is kind of a little trick, we're going to use the stem and the leaves to help support this flower. Okay, so I'm going to need about two and a half inches of stem so I'm just going to kind of measure this from the point of the bottom of the flower and give myself about two and a half inches and you could cut this off afterwards but where the leaves overlap it really helps if you know where your bottom point is um, so that you can glue to that point um, because later on when you're going to cut things off it just makes it a lot easier so, okay, you're gonna align like this so that it overlaps at the bottom and overlaps at the top of the flower. It's gonna be something like that. So, take your piece, hold it up in the ear. and decide where that's going to be overlapped. And I'm going to come on and put some Tombow right at the bottom of my stem piece where it overlaps the leaf and do that. And then I'm going to come in and I see this is where the overlap is here, here, and here. And then I'm going to press on there so now it's almost like having um, two stems. And then I'm gonna do that with the third one as well. Cut off where the stem was. Okay, so now the leaves are, are lined. And then I'm gonna come in here and I want that other stem to support the other side. So I'm gonna come in here, put a little Tombow on that bottom. Give it a squeeze. Okay, line that up. Okay, and then these petals right here overlap right about here and right about there. Whoops. Okay, so 
So now I've got my flower. Cut that off. So there is my daffodil. Bring my box back in and I'm going to put this down here at the back and I'm going to glue it to the back of the box. You don't necessarily have to glue this into the back of the box if you don't want to. Um, I'm going to do that just for stability's sake. This stem could be longer. It could reach to the bottom of the box. What I'm looking for when I'm gluing this in, when I'm looking straight down at it, I want it to be just a little bit below the handle. Okay. Um, if you could have a, a higher one, but if your flower is higher, it's going to stick up above the handle. And I think it looks nicer if it's just a little bit below the handle. So this bottom inch right here is where I'm going to put the glue. And I'll put this kind of right about there. And it's just going to adhere right to the side wall. Get my thumb in there. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Okay. That looks kind of cute. Now what we're going to do is we're going to create a little um piece right here to put right there and what i did was i actually did some of these pieces in advance so i just stamped on a piece of basic white and then i used this die right here to cut it out and you can see how nice that has texture I also have a piece of a basic white cardstock. This measures two and a half by three eighths of an inch. And I'm just going to put Tombow right at the top. Line this up. Kind of with the center. And then to make it easier to go into your basket, I actually don't adhere this one. You could though. It just depends on what you want to do. I'm just going to angle cut the bottom so that when I'm putting it in, it has, it's almost like a little stake. And I didn't tie um, a bow on this one, but if I was adding a bow to this, I would add it with a little mini dimensional. You can see right here, I used a, a little fresh freesia bow and it's popped on a mini dimensional. I feel mini dimensionals are a little bit more sticky than mini glue dots. Um, the problem isn't the cardstock, it's the ribbon. The ribbon's a little bit um, shiny and so that's why glue dots don't stick as well to the ribbon. The card It sticks really well to the cardstock but not to the ribbon. Okay, so how am I gonna finish off this basket? I've got my little pieces. I'm going to take a mini glue dot for my little butterfly as well. Just put it right there for now. Get it ready. Put it on on the last bit. So I had a little bit um, of basket filler. Um, some of it came in a parcel. So, you know, I just save things that I might use for packaging. So um, you might have something like that. You might have some Easter grass or something like that. Or you can cut thin strips of cardstock and crinkle them up. Even like shredded paper or something like that. You don't have to do this. I just want to put a little bit of filler at the bottom. This helps you position your candy and stuff too. Or you can fill the whole thing up with candy if you want to. But this kind of gives you a little cushion to kind of stick things in. So what did I put in my little basket? I tried to find things that had a bit of purple in it. So the Cadbury caramel eggs have purple in them. So that's kind of golden purple, looks nice with that. I found these really cute milk chocolate caramel bunnies um, from Ghirardelli at my local grocery store. There's two in a package. And look at that, isn't that cute? I think that's really sweet. And then um, I had, where are you? Oh, put them aside. These Dove Tulips and Butterflies Dark Chocolate and Sea Salt Caramel. And they come in all these kind of matching 
colors to my basket. It just like really worked out well. So all of these kind of have a, a similar color theme. Um, so I like to put this guy in first because he's going to go in the back next to the daffodil. Just kind of tuck that one in so you can see the bunny coming up. And you can probably find other bunnies. This one's quite small though. So the package is just a little under three inches. Okay, so he's, a, he's not a super tall bunny. Remember last week, the Hershey's bunny? Um, the Hershey's bunny was like quite a bit taller. It's like four and a half inches. I mean, it would still look okay in here too, but this looks cuter with the, um, with the color scheme. And then we've got a caramel, Cadbury caramel egg. And then you can stick as many of these in here as will fit. I've got about two in there. Um, and then you can stick this in here. I think it looks nicer with the ribbon, which I did afterwards, after I photographed it. it <laughs> I was playing around some more. And then that little butterfly. So there is the basket. And here's the one that I did um, earlier. And if you add a little ribbon right here with a dimensional, I think it will look nice. This uh, Fresh Freezer ribbon is really pretty for Easter. So what do you think? Aren't they cute? Oh, I said I was going to, I remembered, I was gonna stick one of these inside. So let's go ahead and do that. Take out your little steak because it's kind of free and it's light and it's gonna kind of go funny. So just take this, you can use the handle to bring it down into your bag, your cellophane bag. Okay, and then after that, you might, if you're gonna do it this way, you might be better off to glue that Easter blessings to the side of your basket so it doesn't shift around. And then you can take maybe a little bit more of that fresh freezer ribbon, bring it up to the top, and now you have a cute little wrapped basket. If you're gonna hand these out um, somewhere, you know, this is a more secure way to hand out the basket. And look, doesn't it look like a real Easter basket with that woven finish? I think that looks really sweet. Okay, I'm going to, I'm so excited to hear what your comments are on this. Um, I wanted to remind you also that if you want to place an order with me to get some of the supplies to make the boxes, I have a host code. I use this host code to buy the, the gifts for the month. Um, this month, the gift is retired six by six paper. It's um, my retired paper. I packaged it up into six by six packages so I can mail it. Um, more easily. So for every $50 you spend, you're going to get one of my um, packages of paper. My customers love this because they get a bunch of paper. If you spend $100, you're going to get two, um, but you need to spend at least $50 and that will um, get you one pack and for every 50 you get more. So please use my host code when ordering. I appreciate that. And if you spend at least $15 with me, you will get a tutorial. And everyone will, that spends at least $15 will get a tutorial in addition to the host code gift if you qualify for that. Um, last month I had the little Hershey's B. I will have a new tutorial for March. It's not designed yet, but it will be coming out. Um, so this is um, the tutorial I have, I have over 80 to choose from. So there's lots of different um, tutorials to choose from. Okay, have I talked enough? Let's talk with you guys. All right, I'm gonna put this away. So I'm just talking with you. Good morning, Vera Blue from sunny Tennessee. Oh, I'm glad you have sunny weather. We have sunny weather here today too. I'm going for a walk with a friend later. Actually, she's also a team member, so that's kind of exciting. And she's bringing her dogs over and I'm a huge dog lover. And so I'm gonna have a lot of fun this afternoon on the walk. Good morning, Birgit from sunny Germany. Wow, a lot of people have sun today, nice. Um, 
Ellie says, oh boy, a basket. I love this already. Oh, someone's a basket lover like me. Um, Ellie's in uh, New York. Um, oh, you're 14 hours away from our next big snowfall. That means we're probably going to get snow here too, Ellie. Don't send it our way. No snow. <laughs> the last snow just melted. I don't want any more of it. Um, good morning, Nancy. Good morning, Dee. Uh, good morning, Denise from South Dakota. Joanne says it's a cute project. Thank you. Good morning, Francis from Milwaukee. Good morning, Cindy from Everett, Washington. Hello, Yama. Good morning, Carol. Um, Carol um, is trying to get my project sheet. Um, well, it gets set out on Saturday. Carol, if you are having, if you're not succeeding in getting the project sheets on Saturdays, um, now if you're a new subscriber, you probably might not have gone through a Saturday with me yet, um, but um, you should have gotten a welcome email from me. And um, if you didn't get that, please connect with me. My contact um, form is down below. So just click on the contact link and um, uh, connect with me and we're, we'll, I'll check to make sure what's, see what's happening with your um, sign up, okay? Fair Blue says, lovely basket and in her favorite color purple. Well, that's great. I have a few people that told me their color, per favorite color was purple. So I hope I'm, I'm um, helping all the purple lovers today. Good morning, Deborah. Um, D says, very cute, a nice Easter gift for everyone. Fergie loves the very cute baskets. I might try them in greens though. Oh, absolutely. I think the nice thing about the basket is you can make it in whatever colors you want. Um, if you're doing it, just remember that it's nice to have three colors because what happens if if you choose the same color for your rim it's going to look a little awkward you're not gonna um i don't have one right here that was a, a prototype because i um uh i i changed it up and i added a different rim to the top afterwards but if you use the same color, then the blocks look funny up at the top and the bottom. So you want um, a color that goes up from the bottom that you adhere to the base. You want a different contrasting color for the center, and then you want a different color for the rims, because I think that looks the best when it comes through. So you need to play a little bit with your color combos. I had a friend, um, I had one of my friends had a birthday yesterday and I was on the phone with her and I was designing and she's a stamper as well. So she was helping me with the colors and I was like, do you like this color combination or that color combination? And so we went through, you know, the pros and the cons of like having like the white, I mean, this looks, this has a very stark contrast to it with the white. My room on the inside's not glued in. But um, so you could do that as well. You could add uh, a white pop to the inside. Just remember when you do the white, your eye's gonna be drawn a lot to the white. So anything you put up top on the basket might not be um, as showstoppery. Um, so that's why I, I chose not to do the white pop um ellie says your finishing details are so special thank you good morning marty she says she loves it you can make them from may 1st as may day yes it's not just an easter basket i think i just think of baskets this time of year and that's why um and i grew up celebrating easter so Yes, Easter is on my mind, but it doesn't have to be for Easter. There are other holidays out there. Um, very cute for Mother's Day, you're right, Marty. A cute basket for birthday. You can change out that greeting. I'm trying to think, oh, you know what, Marty? Um, the Happy Mother's Day, I don't know if that would fit on that same label, but it, there's a Happy Mother's Day greeting in there as well. So that would be a really cute one. To add or you probably have a happy birthday um, stamp that will fit in that little label so that would work out really well okay good morning Martha I'm so glad you joined me again that's a few weeks in a row that's so awesome 
Well, guys, thank you so much for joining me today. If you've made it all this way, I hope you're, you've subscribed to my channel already so you can get notifications of when I go live. Um, there's a little picture of me um, down below that you can click on and that will take you over to the subscribe page. And then make sure you um, click on the bell too so you can receive notifications of um, when I go live. Um, thanks so much. I hope you guys have a great weekend. Let me know if you have any questions. I'm always happy to answer them. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.